वेलकम टू दिस कोर्स ऑन सर्विसेज मार्केटिंग इंटीग्रेटिंग पीपल टेक्नोलॉजी एंड एंड स्ट्रेटजी वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द फर्स्ट सेक्शन एंड इन दिस वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द कंज्यूमर बिहेवियर इन सर्विस कंटेक्सट मॉड्यूल फोर फाइव एंड सिक्स आर डेडिकेटेड टू कंज्यूमर बिहेवियर इन सर्विसेज वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट मॉड्यूल फोर एंड फाइव नाउ लेट एस स्टार्ट विद द मॉड्यूल सिक्स इन दिस मॉड्यूल सिक्स वी विल टॉक अबाउट हाउ टू गो अबाउट ऑप्टेनिंग इनसाइट्स फ्रॉम व्यूइंग द सर्विस एनकाउंटर एज अ फॉर्म ऑफ थिएटर so we have seen in module 5 the moment of moment of truth uh, uh, metaphor now we will uh, we will see the service encounter as a form of the theater knowing how role scripts and perceived control theories contribute to towards a better understanding of service encounter so we will be looking at how this role the scripts and the uh, perceived uh, control theories they uh, affect the service encounter describe how customers evaluate services and what determines their satisfaction then we will try to understand service quality what are its dimension and how to measure them and how quality relates to customer loyalty so these are the things that we will talk about in this module we are continuing with the same three stage model of service consumption the pre purchase stage service encounter stage and the post uh, encounter stage to start with in this previous module The, that is module uh, fifth. We understood the significance of moment of truth metaphor in the context of services. Likewise, theater can be used as a metaphor for service delivery, and firms can view their service as staging a performance with props and actors and manage them accordingly. The props are the service facilities and equipment. These actors are the service personnel and the customers. Now, also keep in mind that uh, we are talking about the high contact services where. the customers move to the uh, the service factory and where they interact with the employees so look at theater as metaphor for service delivery as service delivery consists of a series of events that customer experience as a performance so there are a, se- a sequence of events a series of events that customer experience the theater is a good metaphor for services and the creation of service experience through the servaction system this metaphor is particularly useful approach for high contact service providers such as physicians and hotels and for businesses that serve many people simultaneously such as hospitals professional sports facilities and entertainment now keep in mind that we are talking about the type of service where the customer and the employees they come together the ser- the services are to be delivered on the customer this is the high contact services and there are other customers also in the service uh, factory so let us discuss the stages that is service facilities and the member of the cast that is the front line employee service facilities imagine service facilities that as containing the stage on which the drama unfolds so this is the stage where the service uh, employee and the uh, employees they come and the service is delivered sometimes the setting change for, from one act to another when airline passengers move from entrance to the terminal to the check in stations and there on to the boarding gates and finally step inside the aircraft so the setting keeps on changing some stages have minimal props for example taxi in contrast other stages have much more elaborate props that is a resort hotel or with elaborate architecture luxurious uh, interior design and lush landscaping so there are some some kind of services where the props they are minimum for example that all the taxis may look the same uh, inside but then there are services where where this elaborate uh, this props may may play a distinguishing role a determining role in customer decision making for example the resort hotels with which have elaborate architecture then they may have luxurious interior design and the their landscaping so in this case in the second case these services the props can be used to uh, to distinguish between one service and another service while in the first case they are uh, they don't play any important role personnel the front stage personnel are like the members of a cast playing roles as actors in a drama supported by back stage production team so this this uh, front stage employees they are or front stage personnel they are uh, like the actors in a drama who are playing a role and all the, their role is being uh, supported by some uh, people at the backstage in some instances the service personnel are expected to wear special costume when on stage such as fanciful uniform often worn by hotel doormen 
The theatre metaphor also includes the role of the players on the stage and the script they have to follow. So it is not only about the stage but also the role that they will play on this stage and the script that they have to follow. Maybe what is the movement of their uh, body and what will they speak, what will be the expressions on their face. So actors in a theatre need to know what roles they play and familiarize themselves with the script. Similarly, in service encounters, knowledge of a role and script theory can help organization better understand, design and manage both employees and customer behavior during service encounters. So in services, in high contact services, the employees have to be knowledgeable about the role that they are going to play on a stage and the script that according to which they have to, uh, the service has to be delivered. Now both of them, both of these things are important for the, uh, uh, for the service delivery. So there is this role theory, role, role and script theory. So if we view service delivery from a theoretical perspective, then both employees and customer act out their parts in the performance according to a predetermined role. So this role theory is that as there as uh, as is there in the theoretical uh, uh, theoretical uh, uh, perspective both employees and customers they have their their part to play and that that is predetermined now if both of them know what part they are, what role they have to play what is uh, their the, their role uh, respective roles in the whole of service delivery then it becomes very easy and the total experience can easily be managed stephen grove and rafe uh, frisk define a role as a set of behavior pattern learned through experience and communication to be performed by an individual in a certain social interaction in order to attain maximum effectiveness in goal accomplishment. So the set of behavior pattern that uh, learned through experience and communication and that will determine the, uh, the role to be performed by an individual in a certain social interaction and that will give maximum effectiveness in the goal accomplishment. Roles have also been defined as combination of social cues or expectations of society that guide behavior in a specific setting or context. So roles they are defined as a combination of social clues or expectations of society that guide the behavior in a specific setting or, the, or, or a particular kind of context. The satisfaction and productivity of both parties depend on role congruence. Keep in mind that we are talking of satisfaction and productivity of both parties that will depend on the role congruence or the extent to which each person acts out his or her prescribed role during the service encounter. If any one or both of them they do not act out the prescribed role then obviously the satisfaction and productivity will go down. Employees must perform their role in accordance to customer expectations or the customer will get dissatisfied. As a customer you too have a role to play, play by the rules or risk causing problem for the firm, its employees or even other customers. So the customers too have a role to play, they have to play by the rules or that may cause the problem for the firm, its employees or the other customers who are there. Then there is another theory that is called as script theory. Much like a movie script, a service script specifies the sequence of behavior. Employees and customers are expected to learn and follow during the service delivery. So the service delivery is also, uh, also have a script and this, is, uh, this specifies the sequence of behavior that both the employees and customers will exhibit. Employee receive formal training for uh, for delivering on this uh, script, customers learn the script through experience, through communication with others or through design communication and education. So although employee may can, obviously employees can be given training but customers cannot. So and the customers they learn the script over a period of time through the experience or through the communication with, with other people or the communication they received from, uh, from the company or the education that co company does for its customers. The more experience a customer has with the service company, the more familiar that particular script becomes. So now it becomes easier for the customer to play out his role because now he is familiar with the script. Unwillingness to learn a new script may be a reason not to switch to a comp uh, competing organization. So the customers may not like to, uh, to learn a new script and unlearn the, no, uh, the older script. 
So, that makes him complacent and he may not move to another competing organization. Any deviation from this known script may frustrate both customers and employee and can lead to dissatisfaction. So, uh, so this, uh, this script have to be followed because any, any deviation from the script either by the customers or employees can lead to dissatisfaction. If a company decides to change a service script by using technology to trans transform a high contact service into a low contact one, service personnel and customers need to be educated about the new approach and the benefit it provides. So, if by any chance a company is changing the service script, maybe they are using technology to transform high contact services to low contact services. So, now there is a need not only to educate the service personnel, but also the customers and uh, about this new approach and the benefit it is going to provide to them. Many service dramas are tightly scripted like the flight attendants script for the economy class, which reduces variability and ensures uniform quality. So, the advantage of this, uh, this script theory is that it reduces the variability and it leads to the uniform quality being delivered to the customers. However, not all services involve highly scripted performances. A script tend to be more flexible for providers of highly customized services. Now, when the services are highly customized, this script may be flexible. While on the other hand, when the services are standardized, then this script also become standardized. So, uh, so this uh, scripts tend to be more flexible for providers of highly customized services. For example, the designers, educators, consultants and may vary by situation and by the customers. So, this, uh, this uh, script may vary by, by situation and by the type of customer. And this role and script theories, they complement each other. Excellent service marketers understand both perspective and proactively define, communicate and train their employees and customers in their roles and service scripts. So, both the employees and the customers, they, uh, they are to be trained uh, in the roles and service script to achieve performance that yields high customer satisfaction and also at the same time service productivity. Because you see that satisfaction is important for the customer and productivity is to a large extent uh, important for the service provider. Another underlying dimension of every service encounter is the perceived control. So, we are now talking about the perceived control theory. It holds that customers have a need for control during the service encounter and that control is a major driving force of their behavior and, uh, and satisfaction. So, this theory uh, says that the customers have a need for control during this service encounter and that control drives their behavior and satisfaction. The higher the level of perceived control during a service situation, the higher their satisfaction will be. Now, you see how important it is uh, for, uh, for customers that the, if they think that the level of perceived control is higher and then uh, so their satisfaction will also go up. The perception of this control can, man, can be managed via different types including behavioral, decisional or cognitive control. So, now we are, now the company has to, uh, has to manage this perception of control via, via different types that include behavioral, decisional and cognitive control. Now, let us see what, what does these type of controls means. So, behavioral control mean that customers can change the situation and ask for customization beyond what the firm typically offers. That is by asking frontline employees to accommodate a special arrangement for a romantic candlelight dinner. The decisional control means that the customers can choose between two or more standardized option, but without changing either option. Choose between two tables in a restaurant. And the cognitive control, it refers to the customer's understanding why something happens. For example, flight delay due to technical problems with the aircraft and knowing what will happen next also called as predictive control, know how long the flight will be delayed. We are often mollified when someone keeps us informed about the situation. In short, it is important to de design uh, perceived control into service encounters. So, in, the, in the, those encounters and in moment of truth, it is important that uh, the, uh, the control is designed, the perceived control is designed. However, is proce if processes scripts and roles are tightly defined 
as in the case of self service technologies and highly scripted services such as fast food and consumer banking the scope for customization is limited so when the contact between the the company and the customer is low so then there is a scope the scope of this customization is limited this means firms cannot give much uh, give much behavioral control as carefully designed service processes would simply collapse and productivity and quality will suffer so it means uh, in those when when the scripts and roles are tightly defined when it, they are standardized then companies they cannot give behavioral control to the customers because then the whole service delivery pro process will collapse and that will lead to uh, the reduction in productivity and also the quality and therefore the satisfaction of the customer in those cases firms can focus on giving customers decisional control offer two or more fixed options cognitive control hospitals often go through greater lengths to explain what is being done and why and predictive control never let the customers wait without giving an indication how long the wait will be nevertheless perceived control is largely a compensatory adjective which means that a reduction in behavior control can be compensated through higher decision and cognitive control so the perceived control can uh, so uh, the reduction in behavioral control can be traded off uh, can be compensated by giving the uh, higher level of uh, decisional and cognitive control to the customers now this is the last stage uh, of the consumer behavior that is the post encounter stage so the last stage of uh, service consumption is the post encounter stage which involves consumer attitudinal and behavior responses to the service exp experience so now we are we, we are worried about the uh, the consumer's attitudinal and behavior responses to the uh, to the uh, service experience the important customer responses are that they are satisfied they have service quality perceptions they will come for repeat purchase and they become loyal this is the model of customer satisfaction that is based on the expectancy disconfirmation this is called as the expectancy disconfirm uh, disconfirmation model of satisfaction satisfaction is a judgment following a series of consumer product interactions so the uh, uh, satisfaction is what happens after over a period of time when the when the customers and the product or customer or the service interaction happens in the model confirmation or disc uh, or disconfirmation of pre consumption expectation is the essential determinant of satisfaction so now these are the two two uh, two factors on the left hand si left hand side that is per performance expectations and perceived performance now these two they lead to confirmation or disconfirmation and this may lead to the the satisfaction outcome if uh, if the performance meet the per uh, the perceptions then uh, it is uh, confirmation and the and the outcome is satisfied customers if uh, they do not meet then there is disconfirmation and uh, and it leads to dissatisfied customers so where do service expectations in our customer uh, in our satisfaction model come from during the decision making process customer assesses the attribute and risk related to the service offerings they assess the attributes of the services and the risk of uh, related to the service offerings in the process they develop expectations about how the service they choose will perform our predicted desired and adequate service levels that we have discussed in the consumer decision making section the zone of tolerance can be narrow and and firm if they are related to attributes important to the cho uh, choice processes for example if a customer paid a premium of uh, 350 dollars for a direct flight rather than one that has a 4 hour stopover the customer will not take it lightly if there is a 6 hour flight delay a customer will also have high expectations if he paid a premium for high quality service and will be deeply disappointed when the service fails to deliver so when they when they pay a premium for uh, for high quality service then they have higher expectations and if these those expectations are not met then obviously the customers will be de uh, dissatisfied during and after consumption customers experience the service performance and compare it to their expectations satisfaction judgments are then formed based on this comparison if performance perceptions are worse than expected it is called as negative disconfirmation if the performance is better than 
expected it is called as positive disconfirmation and if it is expected then it is then it is simply called as confirmation of expectations so when expectations are met it is called as confirmation of expectations when they are below the expectations then they are called negative disconfirmation when they are uh, better than the expected then they are called as positive uh, disconfirmation customers will be reasonable satisfied as long as perceived performance falls within the zone of tolerance that is above the adequate service level so when the service delivery is between the adequate and the desired then the customers will be reasonably satisfied as performance perceptions approach or exceed desired levels customers will be very pleased so as you move up the zone of tolerance then the customers will be very pleased and satisfied customers are obviously more likely to make repeat purchase they may remain loyal and they will spread positive word of mouth however if service experience does not meet their expectations then customers they may suffer in silence complain about poor service quality or switch providers in the future satisfaction with service attributes thus results from the experience of attribute specific performance and strongly influence consumers overall satisfaction this multi attribute model help to better understand the formation of process of customer satisfaction so now we are worried about how the customers customer satisfaction is formed so this multi attribute model they helps uh, it helps uh, us to understand how uh, this customer satisfaction is formed is specifically they help managers identify specific attributes with a strong impact on overall satisfaction which attributes have a strong impact on overall satisfaction which is especially important if customers are satisfied with some attributes but dissatisfied with others understanding this helps managers to cement the strength of the firm services and to focus improvement improvement efforts on where it matters most so it will tell the managers where to invest their energy and resources in which areas are important for the customers are expectation always the right comparison standards comparing performance to expectations work well in reasonably competitive markets where customers have sufficient knowledge to choose a service that meets their needs and wants then when expectations are met customers are satisfied however in uncompetitive markets or in situations in which customers do not have a free choice there are risks to defining customer satisfaction relative to their prior expectations for example if customer expectations are low and actual service delivery meets the dismal level that was expected customers will hardly feel they are receiving good service quality in such situations it is better to use needs or wants as the standard for comparison and to define satisfaction as meeting or exceeding customer wants and needs rather than the expectations furthermore the disconfirmation of expectation model works very well for search and experience attributes that is i know whether you kept your promise and delivered by 1 pm but less for those services which are high on credence attributes firms therefore have to understand how uh, customers evaluate their service their service to proactively manage those aspects of their operations that have a strong effect on customer satisfaction even if these attributes may be unrelated to the core attributes such as the quality of a surgery when is customer delight different from the satisfaction so customer delight is a function of three components one is unexpectedly high level of performance arousal that is surprise or excitement and positive affect that is pleasure joy or happiness in contrast high satisfaction alone is a function of positively disconfirmed expectation better than expected and positive affect so achieving customer delight requires focusing on what is currently unexpected once a customer is delighted there is a strong impact on the customer's loyalty moreover once a customer has been delighted their expectations are raised the expectations also go up they may be dissatisfied with service level return to the previous levels and it probably will take more efforts to delight them again in the future now let us look at what is service quality excellent service quality is a high standard of performance that consistently meets or exceeds customer expectations nevertheless it is the it is critical to improve service quality and keep it at high levels 
as it is the key driver of important customer behavior including the word of, word of mouth recommendation, repurchasing and loyalty. What is the relationship between customer satisfaction and service quality? Both customer satisfaction and service quality are defined as contrasting customer expectations with their performance perceptions. So, we are talking of customer expectations, uh, matching customer expectations with their performance perceptions. So, what are the perceptions regarding the performance of this service? Satisfaction is an overall is an evaluation of a single consumption experience, a fleeting judgment and a direct and immediate response to that experience. While service quality refers to relatively stable attitudes and beliefs about a firm. Service quality refers to relatively stable at, at attitudes and beliefs about a firm which can differ significantly from satisfaction. Now, these are the five dimensions of service quality. So, these five dimensions are tangible, reliability, responsiveness, assurance and empathy. Now, tangible means appearance of the physical element that is those elements when the customer meets the company. Reliability means dependable and accurate performance. Responsiveness means promptness and helpfulness. Assurance is credibility, security, competence and courtesy. And empathy is easy access, good communications and customer understanding. And for measuring this service quality, there is a scale that is called as SurveyQL, which is called as service quality. So, SurveyQL is uh, service plus quality. So, this is service quality scale. Again, this scale is based, based on these five dimensions of service quality that are tangible, reliability, responsiveness, assurance and empathy. So, you see that there are uh, 21 questions here. There are four uh, questions related to tangibles. For example, excellent bank refers to cable TV companies, hospitals or appropriate serv service businesses throughout the questionnaire will have modern looking equipments. The physical facilities at excellent bank will be visually appealing. Employees uh, at excellent banks will, uh, will be neat in appearance and material for example, brochures or statements associated with the service will be visually appealing in an excellent bank. And therefore, and again there are four questions related to reliability, again four for responsiveness and four for assurance and five for empathy. For example, excellent bank will give customers individual attention, excellent banks will have operating hours convenient to all, uh, uh, all of their customers, excellent banks will have employees who give customers personal attention, the employees of excellent bank will understand the specific needs of their customers. So, excellent banks have your best interest at heart. So, this SurveyQL scale is developed for uh, keeping the banks in mind. So, uh, you can use this scale for other, other, other kind of service providers also. Now, what is customer loyalty? Loyalty is a customer's willingness to continue patronizing a firm over a long term, preferably on an exclusive basis and recommend the firm's product to friends and associates. Customer loyalty extends beyond behavior and include preferences, likings and future intentions. So, it is not only about recommending the firms, but it also includes preferences, liking and future intentions. The opposite of loyalty is defection, which is used to describe customers who drop off a company's radar screen and transfer their loyalty to another suppliers. So, the uh, lo loyalty is, uh, is, uh, is the customer willingness to continue to, uh, to buy from the same company over a period of time, over a long period of time and preferably they will not buy from some other, uh, any other and they will continue to buy from this firm and they will con also continue to recommend the firm's product to their friends and, and associates. But loyalty, uh, defection is op opposite of loyalty in which, which is used to describe customers who drop off a company's radar screen and they may start buying from someone else. To conclude, we have studied the various models we explored for each of the stages are they, they are complementary and together provide a rich and deep understanding of the consumer behavior in the service context. In all types of services, managing customer behavior is a, a behavior in the three stages of a service consumption effectively is central to creating satisfied customers who will be willing to enter into long term relationship with the service providers. And these are uh, the three books that uh, have been used to prepare this module. Thank you.